Good morning and welcome to Benny Nets. I am Benny, your host, and today is September 24th. And I, this is episode 13. And I will, of course, put all of the notes and any links and my social media in the box below. And let's get started. So what I am wearing is my Fogfall sweater, vest, top, whatever, not vest, shirt. And it's just made out of leftover soft yarn. It's been on the podcast multiple times. I think it is actually my most worn finished object so far that is not like a full on sweater because it's just it's comfortable in cooler weather not really hot weather but cooler weather that isn't completely freezing so it's a good mix on mix layer so finished objects I have two so the first is my Twists and Turns Shawl by Stephen West, which was the MCAL two years ago now for 2022, which I did out of two, three different hand spuns. So I did the gray, which was a flea side process myself. The red was also a flea side process myself. That was oatmeal and then I dyed with Kool-Aid. And then the purple was from Shirsty Cat Designs, and, and it's a Polworth. Um, the red was a Border Leicester Romney Cross, and I'm not sure what the gray was, but those were rather fun. Um, so you saw this last podcast, which was about two weeks ago, and it was mostly done, except for all of these little itty bitty I cord loops. So I finished those finally. Well, 10 of them. Yeah, they're just threaded through the cable to add a little extra oomph there. So those got done. So this is completed. So let me drape it over my shoulders which so far is the easiest way I've found to wear it so this is the remaining of the purple yarn just a little bit left I'll put that aside it's too hot to actually wear the whole thing but yeah so I'm really glad this is done so I did do a modification on the edging which is where instead of doing the chevrons after the rib here, I just did garter stitch and then an I-cord bind off. So I went from the gray to the purple to the red and then bound off in the gray. So this goes, and I found, I think it gives a more natural edge than the chevrons, which I saw on a lot of the finished projects were very, abrupt so it looked it didn't look cohesive it looked a little added on so i decided i wanted to kind of avoid that so i went with more of this where it kind of comes out of the edge a little bit more cohesively so that is done and then my next finished object was the market bag I made, which is the Elaine, Elaine bag by Hannah Ingalls, which is just a knit two together yarn over mesh with a flat bottom and then some ribbing here, which then goes into the handle, which is also ribbing. So this was knit out of a Joann's acrylic. I forget the colorway name. It's one of their big twists. I think it's like community or something. Yeah. So it's a nice little bag. And then I only have two knitting works in progress. 
since I finished the uh, shawl and that has been my primary work in progress, but also been working on my pride socks. I only got a little bit further along, but we're starting to go into the repeat of the other side now. So these are the Mercury Socks by Kim Drotter or Kim McKenzie. I'm not sure which is the correct name. Um, yeah, so it's just a simple lace, fairly easy. I'm doing it modified toe up, two at a time. So I can use the most of this as I can. I don't care that the stripes don't match, so not an issue there. And the yarn is the Progress Pride Colorway from Valkyrie Fibers. That's those. And these are just living in my little knot bag. And then I have my self-drafted vest pattern that I'm working on, which I have gotten quite far on. I have started increasing for the underarms on the back. This is the back. So here is, and it's really rolling. This is the neck, back of the neck. These are the shoulders. I'm doing an English shoulder shaping method. So it's just plain stockinette all the way down. Last time I was probably like here-ish. Yeah. Oh. can't really tell that I've actually started the shaping on the uh, ends here because I've just started. So yeah, once I finish the shaping for the underarms, I'll start, I'll pick up and start for the fronts, which will be attached here. And then I'll just knit down a little bit. I'll do a V-neck and then join those up, do the underarms as well. And that way I'll have the top of the vest. If you can hear the mower, I apologize. I will not be editing it out. I thought they had finished mowing outside, but hopefully I'll be able to get some of that edited out. So. This is a Falkland hand spun and it was dyed by Highland Handmaids who is no longer in business in their old growth color colorway which is all blues and greens and yeah so it's just really nice knitting up um, yeah I mean it's not exciting looking right now but I have a giant spreadsheet with all the measurements I need, hopefully for this on there, as well as what my age is and everything. But we'll see if I actually write up the pattern for anybody else's use or just mine. But that is everything that I've been knitting on. So. Yeah, the mower. So I have been working a little bit on spinning some more of my brown roving. Um, I'm not going to show it to you. It really hasn't changed visually since the last time I showed it. Um, it's gotten more on the bobbin, but you can't tell because there's no color change. So it's just a slightly fatter bobbin, which is there. Um, that's been going pretty well. And then last weekend, I went to New Jersey Sheep and Wool. Not this past weekend, the one before, the 14th. September 14th, I went to New Jersey Sheep and Wool and got a lot of fiber. I did not buy any yarn or other things, just fiber. So I'll, sh I'll show that to you. So I think I'll start with the probably the most crinkly ones, which are, I bought two of these big bags. And I fell off. I don't know. This one's a little more compacted. 
So these are Shepherd's Mill wool processing. They were selling a pound at a time. So that's what this is, one pound. So I got two pounds of that. And it's just wool. So I'm assuming it's a blend of different cheap wools. Um, it's not a merino, it's not that soft, but it's still a perfectly fine wool texture for me. So then that. And then I got, I went to the Noom Spun booth and I got a lot of different sheet treats. So this is a Romney Dale. So a lot of these I haven't actually spun before, so it's kind of a try out, see how they feel to me. And then I have a Texel. Is this and then a tunis? I have spun tunis before. Um, I made a pair of socks out of it. Kind of a nice dark color. Then uh, south down. And a Gotland, which I think is the same color as the South Down, possibly, and the Tunis. Which is just showing me as really dark on camera. Which is the reflection of the lights. I have to turn my ring light on. That might help a little bit. I think some of it is just the plastic. So I did that, which was fun. Yeah, it's always good to try new fibers and stuff, see how they go. And then I went to the Shirsty Cat Designs. And I bought three BFLs. So I got these two in this color and then this one. So what I was going to do was combo spin these. So just pull each braid apart and just mix it together a little bit so that it gets a little bit more blended together. So this will mute out these a little bit, I think. I might actually put them through my drum carter. I haven't decided. Once I get ready to spin these, I will figure that out. And then I also bought her Divine Vase, which is 20% yak, 20% silk, and 60% whole earth. Which is just, the yak is the kind of dark brownish bits. Just this really nice blue color. I might actually try this on my support spindle just to see how that goes, where it's got both the uh, yak and the silk in it. Might be a little bit easier to spin on that. Yeah, it's just so soft. It feels so nice. So I think this is going to probably end up being something kind of lacy. I think the other three will be more like a vest or something like that. But I think this is going to be lacy. The couple of pounds of the blue-green um, I think is going to probably be a sweater. And then we'll go from there with that. And then I went to Create Yarn Works. And I got their whole worth Tessa Silk Blend, which is 66% and 33% of the silk. And this is their Wine Country colorway. Which I don't know if you can actually see that, but just a nice, soft, fourth blend. Look at the match match. Yeah, so it's just this nice, dark red. I think will be fun. Kind of either 
in some weaving or as some sort of lacy shawl or something. So I have that. And then I have my, this is a Suffolk wool, which also have not spun before, I don't think, from Fuzzy Frogs Fibers, which new to me to hire. Most of the, the only dyer I've used before is Shirsty Cat. Um, I do have gnome spun yarns. I have a spindle that he made, but never actually used with any of his fiber. So this is love is love and it's just a rainbow. Absolutely lovely rainbow. So I'm probably going to spin this entire thing as one single and then chain play it back on itself to preserve the rainbow. Then I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it. But it was, yeah, it's a rainbow. It's bright. It's fun. This is the little tag. So you get to see that. Where is the scarf? Yeah. So this will probably be my biggest fiber purchase of the year. I'm going to try to go to, uh, what is it, Kings County Fiber Festival. There's one in Brooklyn later in October. I might try to go to that one. Depends on how much time I have. Uh, with school and everything going on, but I'd probably try to go to that one. Not sure yet. I think so. Then, so that is all of my spinning projects. Well, fiber that I just got. Um, I still have some other spinning projects I need to work on before I can get to these. Then once I get to them, I'll be moving right along on that. very crinkly. So I had all of those. So yeah, I went with a relative to the Fiber Festival. Um, we went there on Saturday, spent a couple of hours. So how I do it is I do a walkthrough of everything first as much as possible just so I can kind of see what there is so I can plan out what I want to go buy. And then I go through and I go much more targeted. Okay, I want to go to this booth and get whatever. Or I want to go to this booth and get whatever. Or I don't want to go to that booth because they don't have anything I want necessarily. I mean, it's always good to look. But sometimes you're not looking for that specific thing. Um, just there were some yarn dyers who didn't have fiber. I was going specifically for fiber. And so I didn't even really look at them if they didn't have fiber, even though I know some of them I've bought from them before and I like their product, but I wasn't aiming for yarn today, that day. And then, yeah, so that was a lot of that. I was just working my way through there and then getting everything. Ended up having to use an Ikea bag to carry it all on the train, because I did use the train partway there and then back. But that was, as always, very fun. Um, yeah, so that is all I have for the fiber and spinning. I have been working a little bit on winding my warp for my next weaving project, which is this kind of tweedy, Green, dark green, forest green yarn. And then behind me, that cone of yarn is going to be the left. So I have contrast. It's going to be a twill pattern. I've already mapped it all out. And that'll be what is next on my loom once I finish warping, which should be soon. I just have to sit down and do it. So is the problem. Is I just have to find the time to actually finish the winding of the warp, then I have to put everything on. Yes, I think 
that is everything I have been working on. All the stuff I bought. And then... Yeah. That is, I think, everything. Um, probably try to get through some of my uh, knitting projects a little bit more in the coming weeks. Try to be back in two weeks. Yeah, so this weekend I might get some done. Next weekend, maybe. We'll see. We'll try for two weeks. Until next time.